I see my practice as an extension of my written journals, which I've kept since I was about 11 years old. The journals became drawings, then slowly in my teens became photographic. I started by taking images of myself in photo booths. I would sometimes take a bag of props to the post office where this particular photo booth was with my pound coins and make these images. There wasn't much time between the shots so everything had to be pre-planned. It was like keeping a visual diary with no particular goal. I spent a lot of my time wanting to challenge the perceptions of what it was to be me. First generation immigrant, queer, feminine, dark skinned and South Indian. I did this by doing extreme things to my appearance so I appeared undefinable in some way. I think now it was more of an act of rebellion and confrontation, a bit punk-like, anti-establishment and deeply political in its sometimes naive and fun way. I eventually got my own camera and this was a huge turning point because now I could make these images in the privacy of my own flat with no time restriction. It also meant that even though I was still fueled by the same questions about identity and the body in relation to what was a very racist time in the 1980s, I was now able to make more complex images in the safety of my own home. So by the time I got to art school in the mid-1990s, I was really quite established in my interests and visual language. What I needed and what art school gave me was an audience, critical dialogue and access to space and equipment. I have since gone on to make some challenging photographic, video and live works, like Olympia. Barflies. Barflies is a triptych video installation with me as three different trans people in three different bars. Each one is specific in look and expression, so there's Maureen, a cross-dresser, Claire, who appears to be a transsexual, trans woman, and Jasmine, a transvestite. I place myself as these three personas in different straight pubs and clubs. The camera records my interactions with the people who encounter me and come into the frame. Technically, there's a small DV camera which is placed by the optics and it documents an hour of the action. The soundtrack is taken from live recordings on telephone chat lines where people are seeking to meet or engage with various types of trans people and alter egos. The soundtrack is mostly very sexual, but it also becomes very moving and confessional at times. You have a message from... Tony from Scotland. Hi baby, this is Tony. I'm 24, I'm from Glasgow, I'm also 5'8", very fair here. Uh, I have a good body, I'm um, very tanned, very toned. <laughs> You have a message from? Good looking young guy. Yeah, good looking young active guy. Um, online for fun. Get back to my number and you're up for a chat, yeah? Where about you calling from? You have a message from? Sleazy Tarty TV. Hi, it's Jane here with a Tarty Sleazy looking glamour model TV. I'll feel absolutely anything special for me. To ignore it. You have a message from? David, 38, bisexual, West London. Well, I definitely love the sound of you. I love the sound of your sexy voice as well. Well, I'm just You have a message from? Good looking young guy. You are, right, this is Tom, good looking young guy. Good from London. Mm -hmm. I'm for fun. My number's 079. You have a message from? Uh, Sharon from Gloucester. I don't know, it's Sharon, Jasmine, the flip puss. You have a message from? Hi, it's Jane in Helmslow. Hi, here, Jasmine. Or as you say, it's sexy TV. Oh, I love the voice, darling. Um, well, hello. Right, OK, it's, uh, it's your agony aunt of the chat line here. It's Auntie Jane. Um, right, well, let me tell you a bit more about myself. I'm 48 years old. Uh, more mature tranny, darling figure to match, I hasten to add as well. Oh dear, things have gone south, you know it is, amongst us girls. But I'll be 49 next month. Um, I'm about 5 foot 7, 5 foot 8 inches tall. Uh, long black hair, all my own, going grey with natural highlights, so no sniggering. 
otherwise it's claws out and handbags at six paces. <laughs> um, I take about a size 18 to 20. I am slowly losing weight. Um, it was something I consciously decided on all oh, last summertime. I thought, God, I'm getting like a barrage balloon. I've lost three and a half stone so far without much trouble at all, so I'm doing well. Um, but uh, what else can I tell you? Yeah, blue eyes, great sense of humour. Um, can be the life and soul of the party when I really get going. Um, oh, in the downstairs knicker department, well, oh, well, you know. Um, it's six and a half inches, quite thick, uncut. Get no complaints there. Um, on the sex side, um, I like my sex slow and passive and gentle. Um, I don't like any rough stuff whatsoever. I get very upset if people do that to me. Um, that was due to a bad experience about 10 years ago. This was a live piece called Miss United Kingdom, an archive. This was part of a bigger show produced by Ducky and the theme was Rural Britannia. I was really interested in the British beauty queens of colour who've perhaps not been celebrated as much as their counterparts and I was particularly looking at the years when some of them had won 1966, 1975 and 1994. This was essentially a nightclub posing piece with serious undertones which the audience either engaged with or just enjoyed for the glamour and the absurdity of beauty competitions. In 2011, I was invited by the Royal Shakespeare Company to create a project, and I went back to Stills Photography. I chose to focus on the theme of death in Shakespeare, especially suicide, because it felt important to talk about the presence and longevity of suicide in Shakespeare's plays as an act of courage, passion and honour, and to create a dialogue about suicide as an act of terror in our modern world. There are 13 suicides across the plays, and apparently that's where the unlucky 13 comes from. It was also really interesting to occupy an English heritage space as a queer brown artist and assume these roles from English literature. And these are large scale Durotrans embedded in light boxes. The Ancestors. An ongoing photographic series exploring sacred geometry, botanical structures, ancestral memories, and other dimensions. And most recently, an Indian in a box.
I inhabit my work, present it on my body, and in time the works have become a trail, a physical, emotional and spiritual map of my journey.